There's only two things. No, sorry. There's only two things more badass than a giant gun. Those are going to school and eating your vegetables. Today on Crappy Science, we're gonna make this gun even better. You missed. You missed. It's bad. That's that's too tight. There we go. It's like, it's gone. Today's video isn't going to cover the building of the air cannon. This is something that I built a couple years ago. I didn't follow specific plans, but you can probably find something similar online. What I do want to find out though, is how powerful this cannon is. And I think we can do that by measuring the weight of the fruit and the speed the fruit leaves the cannon at. The speed of the unripe orange can be measured using two infrared beams. On this breadboard, I have a single beam set up with the emitter and the detector. When I place my finger in front of the beam, you'll see the meter read a logical high level. A logical, logical high level. <laughs> and when I remove my finger, it goes back to a logical low. The problem with this current configuration is this sensor is very sensitive to ambient light. So if you're using this on a very bright day, it's not gonna work so well, even though it currently works now. There are solutions to filter out ambient light, or we can go the easy route of simply blocking light from hitting the detector. I'm thinking this uh, piece of cardboard in the trash should do. To display the speed of the orange, I'm going to uh, sacrifice this old prop that has a four digit seven segment and Arduino Pro Mini. The second beam is wired up. Uh, I've put a piece of tape around it to protect the electronics. So I'm gonna test it really quick, and it works. I've just realized I don't care what this looks like. I'm gonna literally tape the old prop onto the top of this thing. It's gonna save me a lot of work. Uh, five volts ground are shared between the two, and then there's two separate signals, one for each beam. When I drop an object through the tube, it breaks both beams and spits out the total time of the fall in milliseconds. Now I need to uh, convert that fall time into speed. Today, I've got my main cannon and my side cannon, and we're gonna test out the speed sensor. Oh my God, you're fat and heavy. Ugh. When the orange passes through the speed sensor, the speed is displayed in feet per second. The buttons don't actually do anything. Sorry. That's all zeros. The meter didn't work and it's because of the ambient light. We tested it inside and it works fine. So I'm gonna to try to cover up some of the spots where sunlight's getting through, uh, which is in the back and obviously the front, the two openings. Uh, and hopefully we can get a reading this time or wait till it gets darker, but I don't wanna wait. This is so ugly. Look at that, look at that front end. Say hello to my little friend. No. Say hello to my little friend. Ah, damn it. Oh. Remember when I said ambient light might be a problem? Well, it's a huge problem. Uh, I don't know how this goes, but I need a little bit of that right now. I think we found a spot where the uh, sensor won't get tripped up. Two, one. 256.3 feet per second. 
That shot was actually 175 miles an hour. Two, one. That's 235 feet per second. 235.6 feet per second, two miles per hour. That would be 160.64 miles per hour. Nice. You've seen how the sensor was made, but how does it actually work? Oh, my glasses are broken. Well, when it does work, there's two beams that travel across the inside of the tube. When the orange enters the tube, it breaks the first beam, and the microprocessor begins counting how long it takes to travel and break the second beam. Since we know the distance between the beam is about six inches, we can calculate the velocity. The orange is only between the beams for about two milliseconds. That's two thousandths of a second. What you're watching right now is playing at 24 frames per second. Those frames last for 40 milliseconds on your screen. That's really, really fast. What did I learn today? Uh, no filtering on a beam breaking circuit isn't good. While editing the video, I realized that we were trying to measure the power the cannon shoots with and we never figured out the weight of the fruit. So let's go ahead and weigh the fruit to, uh, <laughs> okay, let's go find a fruit and weigh it. <laughs> oh my God, oh, that's stuck. 2.45 ounces. All right. I've done some maths and figured out that the average acceleration of the orange in the barrel is 328 Gs. The total time spent in the barrel is about 24 milliseconds, and the average power of the air cannon is 9,250 watts, which is 10 times more powerful than your microwave, about 12.4 horsepower for a very short duration. We might have some cool stuff that's going to add right now and cut out this, but if not, that means this is the end of the video. So if you want to subscribe for more crappy science videos, if you want to send me cat t-shirts, I got, actually no, that's a, let's not do that, that's a bad idea. Um, yeah, that's it. See you next time.